Fraga, you work as an advisor to the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs um, in Afghanistan, but you are also a researcher on water issues and have a lot of experience in the water sector. Could you please uh, explain us if Afghanistan actually is a water rich or a water poor country? Um, yes, that's correct. So um, I've worked at the Center for Policy and Human Development at Kabul University and we looked at um, the link between Uh, water and uh, poverty uh, for the third National Human Development Report, which is actually available online. Um, the issue of whether Afghanistan is a rich or poor water um, country is an interesting one, um, because the perception is that Afghanistan is rich in its water resources. Um, and if you do look at the figures at the national level, that's true. Afghanistan has sufficient water to meets its citizens' needs, whether it's for domestic, agriculture, industries, and energy and environmental sustainability. But when you look at the figures at the five hydrological river, a different picture emerges. Um, in our report, we examined the per capita water availability for the citizens of these five river basins, and we have actually found out that The Northern River uh, Basin is already going under absolute water scarcity. The Hari Road is close to water stress. Um, we use basically use Falcon Mark indicator, which is a method to figure out whether a country does have sufficient water or not. That's the current standing. But we also, if we look at the Afghan population growth, and also the increasing standards of living, the situation will actually will become um, even worse. And then another phenomena that Afghanistan is um, uh, challenged by is the impact of climate change. Um, in terms of the studies of the climate change, we have very little information. To, um, right now, there are some organizations that are in, involved in studying the impact of the climate change, but we know that it will impact the availability of water for the agriculture sectors in terms of, um, you know, will we have sufficient water during the growth cycle of the plants. Um, so in that regards, we can say that Afghanistan is dealing with um, water challenges and, and we actually refer to it as water crisis. So what vulnerabilities do Afghans actually face? Um, the vulnerabilities varies from location to location. The vulnerabilities are more, um, the impact is more for the poorer families who do not have as strong assets um, because Afghanistan as a semi-arid country um, faces periods of drought and uh, floods. Every year, every year we actually see uh, you know, flash floods and then one of the impact of the climate change is that the period of droughts are um, becoming um, stronger and the flooding become uh, more intensified. So the vulnerabilities will be in the form of loss to the livelihoods of the rural Afghans, um, um, damages and debts. Unfortunately, um, despite the interventions, we do not have a reliable central uh, data system to monitor the impact of these vulnerabilities. But there are a lot of examples from many Afghans um, that, you know, um, the impact of the um, flooding um, or the drought. I mean, I can give you a few examples that we came across during our research. And um, um, for example, during the flood, uh, during the drought of 2008, there was a decline of um, 40 to 50 percent in cereal production. This was in the irrigated areas, so they do have the you know, infrastructure for watering their land. But the situation is even worse from the rain-fed areas where they don't have the you know, um, reliable access to water. And the impact in those areas was actually close to 80%. Um, now imagine in Afghan villages where access to market is not um, so spread um, in these times, um, the issue becomes so severe because then it's an issue of food insecurity. And also another indication, if we look at the impact of uh, droughts on the um, livelihood of Afghans, is the impact on the um, livestock. Uh, on average, close to, close to 70% of all Afghan um, households lost their um, uh, livestock during a, a typical drought period.
when the rich um, families are able to cope um, with you know different strategies, for instance, relying on the water pumps um, to dig a deeper well to get uh, access to water to their land, or they're able to buy you know more expensive grain from the market to feed their family and, and to feed their um, livestock, it's the poor family that loses on their um, livelihood sources, such as their assets, their lands, and um, sometimes out, not sometimes actually, in a lot of times, out mi migration to the cities and also to the neighboring countries such as Iran, which um, has its own risks um, as well. I should mention Afghanistan has a very rich community-based water management system and it goes back to so many generations. Um, the, the, this has been one of the traditional systems that has focused on management practices as well as infrastructure in Afghanistan. Um, and, uh, and at the national level, recently in 2010, a new water law was passed. And with this water law, the idea of uh, integrated water resources management, IWRM, was promoted. And as part of the IWRM reform, new structures have been envisioned to take the responsibility for managing water system based on um, hydrological um, area, not geographically uh, divisions. And that's where the idea of five river basin came along. And along these five river basins, different structures, such as water councils, water user associations, both at central, at the district, and at the village level have been envisioned to um, take charge of the management of water resources. In parallel to that, we still have the community-based management system that I talked about. Um, this is the Mayrop or the Mayrop system, which has been functioning even during the periods of um, war and conflict in Afghanistan. In some areas, especially in the north, um, they've been able to actually uh, change some of these um, water user associations have been established and they include the Mayrops, but in some other areas they've not been in included. Then, so that's the governance in terms of the management, the maintenance and water sharing um, um, issues at the national level. And then on the international level, since Afghanistan is a country where the water flows to the neighboring countries, so we have shared water uh, with all of our neighboring countries. And in that regard, Afghanistan has one treaty with the Iran. And the rest of the four other river basins, we do not have agreements or treaty in terms of uh, water allocation.